Hey everyone, Kevin here, and in this uh, video, I'm going to be going over the content I've consumed this week, and it's all about philosophy, and I'm not only going to try to explain the content I went over, but I'm going to try to give concrete examples for each piece I consumed as well. So first up, I read this piece by Jason Fried, and it's called Give It Five Minutes, and in this article, he is talking at this seminar type thing. And after his speech, somebody else goes up on stage, and the whole time this guy is speaking, he is writing down things that he disagrees with, or things that he's trying to, like, you know, poke holes in his argument, basically. And after the speech, he goes up to him, and he starts telling him all the things that he disagrees with. And the guy just says back to him, man, give it five minutes. And that really struck Jason. He was, you know, brought back by that because... He didn't even try to give this guy the time of day. Like, he just immediately off the bat was trying to disagree with everything that he said. And he realized that you don't learn anything by doing that. You don't gain anything from doing that. And it's only when you let somebody else voice their opinion and you try to absorb it that you can learn something and try to gain value from that. Um, and yeah, I just thought that was, it was a really awesome article and it could be applied to lots of aspects of life, even... Just this week when I was consuming this content, um, you know, I kind of rushed through it all and I understood it like off the bat and I liked it, but I didn't really challenge myself by doing that. It was only when I went back and I read each piece by itself and like kind of step back and try to process it in silence, you know, the power of silence. And that was when I could relate it to something or I could, you know, apply it to other things instead of just understanding it. So this is just a really useful article for anyone trying to adopt that kind of mindset of give it five minutes or just give anything time, really. And then the next piece I read as well, it was the work required to have an opinion. And it was also really great. And it just basically says, you know, anyone can have an opinion. Um, everyone, anyone ha can voice what they think. But to have an opinion that somebody respects or somebody that wants to listen to or if you want to gain an audience from your opinion you have to do the work and that means you have to not only have your own beliefs but you have to put yourselves in the shoes of others who believe something else and then once you can do that you can say to that person hey i understand where you're coming from but here's why i think i'm right and here's why i think it's better than that instead of just saying this is why i'm right off the bat and I think this can be seen in pretty much day-to-day -day life. You know, we see it on Facebook all the time, people just posting their opinions and not really taking into consideration what the other people um, think. Um, I know this is like a touchy subject, but you think like Ford and Kavanaugh. Whenever I turn on the TV, all I ever said, seen is, you know, somebody voicing and making it like some type of political argument. And that really just like discouraged me because... I wanted it to be more than that. I wanted it to be an investigation when I clicked on the TV. I don't I didn't want to be seeing somebody voicing their opinion about their Republican or a Democrat. I wanted to see, you know, the facts of the case. And I feel like as a viewer, it was hard for me to really get anything from it because I just felt both sides were turning this into like some type of political argument when it really should have been an investigation of what happened and trying to understand both sides but also trying to understand what actually happened. And yeah, I think that's just one example. I know that's a very touchy subject, um, but, and you know, that's just my opinion you well. You don't have to listen to that. But the next piece I read, um, actually I watched, was a video called You Don't Know How Wrong You Are. And in that video, there's a professor and he's talking to a group of people lecturing about... <laughs> all about how we don't know how wrong we are and he shows throughout the video that even the smartest people even the people that made discoveries aristotle plateau isaac newton all those guys were wrong at some point and they were even more wrong than they were right but it was their willingness to be wrong that got them somewhere that got humanity somewhere that we got something out of it and it really just shows how you have to be willing to be wrong to not only find discoveries about the world, but find things out about yourself. And definitely for me, this is something I've been trying to adopt into my life recently. Um, 
definitely like going through college the whole time I was always questioning it. And I was the, when I look back, the thing I was most afraid of was being wrong, was being wrong about my decision to be there. And it wasn't until I was able to accept that I might be wrong that I could start moving forward and start moving closer to being right and finding out who I am and finding out what I'm good at. And now when I look back, I really try to just accept that fact that I was wrong that college, you know, college wasn't going to get me to where I want to be in life. And that's okay that I was wrong. And it's great now that I can accept that and I can get closer to being right. And then the next piece I also read, and it was why philosophers make formidable entrepreneurs. And which is also a great article, if you think about it, philosophy, philosophers um, are constantly trying to figure out new ideas and new ways the world works, right? And entrepreneurs are doing the same thing. They're trying to figure out ways in which people aren't thinking so they can like better the world and better help people. And yeah, I definitely agree with that. And the only thing I disagree with is, you know, they make a case that if you want to be a tech entrepreneur, it might be a good thing to go to college and study philosophy. But I kind of disagree with that because I really think it is if you are an aspiring entrepreneur or if you are an entrepreneur, then philosophy is useful to you because you will be more open to those ideas in your actual life. But I think just studying philosophy alone um, can at times be hard to apply to the actual world. But, you know, that's also just my opinion and my take on it. And then <clears throat> the next piece I also read, it was, sorry about that, why, um, what is philosophy? An anonymous definitions from prominent philosophers. And basically what they did in this article was they just asked a bunch of different philosophers what their definition of philosophy is. And what they found was it was extremely difficult to define and everybody has a different opinion. Um, and yeah, the one opinion or definition that stood out to me was most simply put, it's about making sense of all this. We find ourselves in a world that we haven't chosen. There are all sorts of possible ways of interpreting it and finding meaning in the world and in the lives we live in. So philosophy is about making sense of that situation we find ourselves in. Claire Carlyle. Wow. Okay, so that really spoke to me because that really is how I look at philosophy. Um, I think if, you know, if you can't apply it to the own situations that you are in, then what's really even the point of studying it? That's like just my take on it. Um, but yeah, it really spoke to me because... I think a lot of times with philosophy, it can be hard to apply to your own life, but that is how it's most useful is when you can do that and trying to use it to figure out the situations that we are in. And then the last piece of content I consumed was um, when do hypotheticals cover their costs? And in this article, basically, Brian Kaplan is arguing that, you know, hypotheticals really do have their time and place. Yes, there are um, senseless hypotheticals, and people always say, oh, well, we're never going to have to worry about that. Why are you asking me that? It's pointless. But most of the times when they are saying that, it's because they're afraid of the answer. And that's what I think hypotheticals really do, you know? If you ask somebody, hey, man, like, what would you do if you died tomorrow? And they're like, man, I'm not going to die tomorrow. What are you talking about? But when you think about it, that's really just such a useful question to ask yourself. Like, if today was your last day on Earth, what would you do? You know, that really gets that out of you. It forces you to think about your life and think about what you really want to do. So it really is like a powerful statement. And people often overlook them or try to write them off. But I think you should be asking hypotheticals to yourself all the time and on just basic general things about the world. So, yeah. Really awesome week. Um, I learned a lot and I think I gained a lot from it. And thank you for watching. See you next time.